Today we are going to be making this interactive keypad. But when you get the code wrong, nothing happens. When you get the code correct, the door will unlock. We will be going over interfaces, functions, master materials, timelines, and many more. We are hosting a giveaway in the Discord, but more on that later. Alright, so first we're going to add the model and textures. The link will be in the description. Now just create a folder for the meshes to keep it organized. If you click on the first mesh, hold shift, and then select the last mesh, you can actually select all the meshes. Create a material and before opening the material, you want to disable RGB from this material. Just open up the material. Now just copy what I do. Now apply and save. Now create a folder for your materials. Now we are going to create an interface. This interface will be used to interact with the keypad and the door. Just give it a name. Compile and save. Now open up your player blueprint. Add your key input. Now get this line trace node. This will shoot a line from the player and interact with a given actor. We want the start location of the line to start from the player's camera. Get the rotation. Get forward vector. Now get this multiply node. This multiply node is the length of the line trace. Now add the two and then you got your endpoint. Hold B and left click to get this branch. Break this. Now we want to check if the actor that the line hits is containing the interface that we made. If it is, then we want to call this interact message, which we will be applying to the keypad shortly. Double click on this line to create a reroute node to stay more organized. Now let's go ahead and create the keypad blueprint. Open up the content drawer. Now select all the meshes and then drag it into the blueprint. Now select all your meshes and then apply the material. Now you want to add the camera component. And now just align your camera. Add your interface. Now open up your event graph. Double click on your interface to add it to the graph. And when we interact with the keypad, we want to switch the player's view. So get the set view target with blend node. A new view target should be self, and then change the blend time. Get set ignore look input. This is so that we cannot look around while interacting with the keypad. Get set enable click events. This will allow us to interact with the buttons on the keypad. Then get the set show mouse cursor node. And then check the box. Now get player character and then get disable movement node. Now create these variables. The input variable will be the button that we press. and length of code will be how much numbers can be typed into the code. We are giving away a $25 Steam gift card to a random person that joins the Discord. Link in the description. Let's go ahead and create the keypad widget. Now add your canvas panel. Add your text. Hold control and left click one of the anchors to align your text. Change the alignment to 0.5. Now just move your text a little bit down. Give your text a name. 
and then make it into a variable check size to content now make sure the text is empty now open up your keypad blueprint on event begin play we are going to get this widget select the keypad widget class now promote it into a variable give it a name now go to the ending of this logic now add your widget to the graph now add it to the viewport Click on your button number 1, scroll down, and select on clicked. So right now we are setting up the logic for these buttons. Now get your input variable. Now get this append node. Now type in number 1 because that will be the input for the button number 1. Now set your input. Alright, each time we click the button, we want to add 1 to the length variable. Now set the length. Now get your widget reference, then get the text. Now you want to set the text that will be displayed on the keypad. If the input is equal to the correct code, then we want the branch to be true. And on true, we want to make something happen. Go into correct code and give it a code. We are just going to add these print strings for now, just for testing purposes. Since we didn't set up the other buttons, we are just going to change the correct code to four ones. Now add your keypad to the level. Now hit play and give it a test. As you can see, when we hit one four times, it prints correct. Now we are just going to change the code back. When the code is correct, we want to revert all the changes. So get the set view target with blend node. Instead of getting self, we are going to get player character as the new view target. Change the blend time. Reset ignore look input. Get set enable click events and keep it on false. Same thing with set show mouse cursor. Set movement mode and set it to walking. And I just organize this. And now set input mode to game only. Now drag your length variable into the graph. If the length is greater or equal to 5, then it will reset the input back to nothing. It's actually 4 numbers, but if you click an extra button, then it will just reset. On true, we want to set the input back to nothing, and also set the text on the widget back to nothing as well. And then set the length back to zero. Alright, now go back to the other branch and delete the print strings. Connect the false into the other branch. Just organize this. Zoom out and highlight all these nodes. Now right click and collapse it into a function. Now give it a name. Now go back into the function. Now connect the B input into here. Go into your event graph. And on the B input, change it to the number of your button. And now copy and paste the functions to the other buttons and just change the B input to match the buttons on the keypad.
Press play and give it a test. I'm just aligning my camera. And now we are going to add the starter content to the project because we will be using the door for this tutorial. And now search for your door. By default, the door does not have any collision, so we are just going to add it ourselves. And now go ahead and create the door blueprint. Now add a static mesh. Then add your interface. Now add the door to the static mesh. Now open up your event graph. Delete this. Now double click to add your interface to the graph. This flip flop node will toggle between the open and closed state of the door. Add a timeline. This node will transition between the states. Now we are going to set the rotation of the door. Right click and split the pins. Get the slurp node from the Z axis. Now open up your timeline. The length is how long it will take to open and close the door. So we are just setting it to 0.4. Just copy what I do. Set the value to 1. Hold shift and left click the two points. And then right click and select. Then connect the track to the alpha. Now we want it to transition from 0 to 90. Which is what the slurp node is for. Compile and save. Now go back into your level. And we are going to create another interface. This interface is going to be used to communicate to the door when the code is correct. Now we are going to create two functions. For set code correct, create this boolean input. For get code correct, create this boolean output. Now open up your player blueprint. Now go ahead and add the interface that we just made. Double click on set code correct and then promote this boolean into a variable. Now double click on get code correct. Now drag the boolean variable into the input of the return node. And now go back into your door blueprint. Now move this aside. And now you want to get code correct. And then connect the output into a branch. Target will be get player character. Now go back into your keypad blueprint. Open up your function. When the code is correct, you want to set code boolean to true, which will unlock the door. And the target will be get player character. Now go back into your event graph. Go to the end of this logic and now enable input. We are enabling input so that we can use an input to exit the keypad. Now copy this logic. Now copy and paste this logic. This will be the exit state for the keypad. We are just going to make minor changes to this logic. Replace self with get player character. Replace this with reset ignore look input. Now disable these two. Delete this. Now set movement mode and set it to walking. Now set input mode to game only. Organize this. And then disable the input. If you hold control and drag the pin, you can actually move it over. Now go back to the top logic. And then set input mode to game and UI. Now press play and give it a test. Now highlight this logic, right click and collapse it into a node. Now go back into the viewport. Now add the widget component. Scroll down. Now add your widget. Now open up your widget blueprint. 
Now just add any number so that we can see better in the keypad blueprint. Open up your keypad blueprint. Now just align the text to the screen. Now go back into your widget blueprint and then delete the text. Then open up your keypad blueprint. Now if you press play, you will see that it does not work and that is because we need to do a couple of things to make it display. Go to your event begin play and delete this logic and then drag your widget component into the graph. Then you want to get the widget. Now you want to cast the widget. Promote this into a variable. Now open up your code function. Now replace the keypad widget reference with the new reference that we just created. Now open up your event graph. And then delete this node. Now press play and give it a test. Now we are going to create a material. This will be the master material. Change domain to light function. Hold 3 and left click to get this node. Get this multiply node. Hold 1 and left click to get this node. This will be the strength of the emission. Right click and convert this into a parameter. Give it a name. We are converting them into parameters so that we don't need to create multiple materials. Apply and save. Now open up your level, right click on your material and create a material instance. This will be the red material. Open up the material and then just mess around with these values. Now create another material instance. Now this one will be green. Same thing, just mess around with the values. Now open up your keypad blueprint, go to your viewport. Now click on this model, now apply the red material instance. Now open up your event graph, now open up your function. When the code is correct, you want to set the material for the spheres and change it to green. Move this over. Now add your fonts. Now open up your widget blueprint, select your text. Just change the font and color of your text, and also mess around with the spacing as well. Now press play and give it a test. Now add your sound effects. Now open up your keypad blueprint. Open up your function. When the button is clicked, we want to play a sound. When the code is correct, we also want to disable the input. That's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you learned something new and if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment with your thoughts or questions. I'll catch you in the next one.